It's a whole new world out there and AI is going to destroy photography as we know it. Or is it? I'm going to give you my thoughts about the future on today's episode of Ask David Bergman. Hey there, welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions right here on Adorama TV. If you've got a question, just go to askdavidbergman.com, submit that form on the site, and I just might pick your question and answer right here on a future show. Today's question is a deep one sent in by Geet M. What do you think about the future of photography with the advent of AI? All right, so you want me to predict the future, do you? Well, I'm not sure how well I can do that, but I am happy to give you my thoughts and maybe inspire you a bit so it's not as scary as it all seems. Now, I'm recording this video in July 2023, and I've been a working professional photographer for over 30 years. I've seen a lot happen during that time. There have been numerous evolutions, with the biggest one being the advent of digital photography. AI, however, is not just an evolutionary step, it's revolutionary. So many things that we take for granted are changing virtually overnight, and we photographers need to adapt in order to survive. So first of all, what is AI? Well, the acronym, of course, stands for artificial intelligence, and the buzzword seems to be everywhere today. The phrase is kind of a catch-all for many different automating learning technologies and was first coined in the 1950s. The tech has really been developing over the last few decades, but the biggest changes have come just in the last year or two, with AI becoming more accessible to all of us. One of the more well-known AI projects is ChatGPT. We already know that you can use Google to search for virtually any information that's already out there, but ChatGPT is like a person that you can ask questions. That person has access to Google and, of course, everything else, and can analyze all of that data and give you a thoughtful answer in seconds. I asked ChatGPT to give me a simple one-paragraph explanation of AI, and this is what it said. AI, or artificial intelligence, refers to the development of computer systems that can perform tasks and make decisions that typically require human intelligence. These systems utilize algorithms, machine learning, and other technologies to process data, learn from it, and adapt their actions accordingly, enabling them to solve problems, recognize patterns, and interact with users in increasingly sophisticated ways. So I think that's a run-on sentence, but other than that, it's a pretty good description. Now, if I had Googled the question, what is AI, it would have sent me to a website with an answer that someone had written. The block of text I just read was written on the fly based on all the information the system can access. Simply put, AI can learn. It analyzes data and can make new distinctions as things change. We're only seeing the tip of the iceberg at this point, and it's growing exponentially. But what does this have to do with photography? Well, as most of you know, AI has been creeping into photography for a while and has really picked up steam recently. There are some amazing new technologies that help us to create better images now. The Canon 1DX Mark III, for example, came out a few years ago, and it has a deep learning database built into the autofocus system that can detect faces on people. This significantly speeds up focusing and is way faster than anything I could do myself. And there are a bunch of other AI-based technologies that help us to save time and make better images. But there is another side to AI that is probably at the root of Geet's question and is what has many creative people shaking in their boots. Artificial intelligence can now create images from scratch. Midjourney is a system that brought this into the spotlight where anyone could type in a prompt and have the AI return an image based on your request. I asked it to make a picture of a cool photojournalist at a rock concert, and this is one of the many options it gave me. It's far from perfect, of course. I have no idea what kind of camera that is, but it's still pretty impressive considering I kept my request pretty broad. But I think the biggest tidal wave is when the latest beta version of Photoshop became available about two months ago. Photoshop, of course, is the industry standard for image editing, and you now have access to AI tools built right in. The generative fill function is amazing. You just select the area you want changed and tell it what to do. Sometimes I wish I had shot this portrait of aerialist Julie Marshall as a horizontal with some breathing room down at the bottom. Now I can just expand the canvas and let generative fill do its thing. This took about 10 seconds. What if you want to remove something in the background of a picture? Changing the look of this building behind Stephen Kellogg also just took a few clicks. And how about changing your subject's wardrobe? Very easy to do. I can even have Heather wearing a full suit of armor without having to go out and rent one. Now, yes, all of this could have been done in Photoshop before, but it was painstaking to do manually, and it would have taken a long time to do, even if I had the skills to actually do it. Now you just tell the computer what you want, and it does it. 
Now keep in mind, this is still beta software, so it's not perfect yet, and also limits the resolution of your final output. The AI systems behind this are learning more and more every day, and it will get exponentially better. Now, if you're watching this a few years from now, you're probably laughing at how primitive the technology is, just like when we watched something from the 90s when they were trying to explain what the internet is to grown adults. Now, AI can't just create realistic images, but it's also being used to create all kinds of art, paintings, 3D renderings, video, and even music. You could have AI generate a song that sounds like something Elton John would have written, but it's being sung by LL Cool J. That never happened in real life, but it sounds really like the real thing. It is somewhat mind-blowing. So what does this mean for the future? Well, I think AI technology is mostly a good thing for photographers. Not only can the cameras help you autofocus on things like people, animals, or cars, but it can also help you cull through thousands of photos to whittle it down to your best ones. We're probably not that far off from editing programs learning your style based on how you've already edited thousands of other photos and then apply it to your new pictures. Personally, I'm looking forward to having AI analyze the millions of images in my archive so it knows what's there. I'm currently on tour with Luke Combs and have photographed a couple hundred of his concerts. Maybe management will contact me one day and say, we need a photo of Luke during a show looking straight into the camera, smiling, wearing a hat, and the lighting pattern in the background is a specific one we used during a certain song. I can just type that into the search box and it'll give me like all the 25 frames that match that exact query. The only way to do that in the past is if I had meticulously keyworded every image before I put it in my archive. And you can bet I wouldn't have put that much detail in there. But the AI will probably be able to analyze all of that data and give me what I need in seconds. I am very excited about the future that involves something like that. So is there anything to worry about? Well, yes, of course. New technology always causes disruptions. The cliche is that the horse and buggies were all put out of business with the advent of the car. Would anyone say that we were better off when we were using horses and buggies? Probably not. But the buggy drivers who lost their jobs probably weren't very happy about it. And there was a similar shift when digital cameras became more common. A lot of photo jobs went away. Most film processing labs closed and even the most skilled darkroom technicians were laid off. However, some of those buggy drivers probably learned how to drive a car or maybe they opened a taxi business. Darkroom techs might have learned digital retouching or started a graphic design studio. At the same time, inexpensive digital cameras and programs like Photoshop have democratized the creative process, allowing everyone to create and share their art. I think that the net result of that has been overall positive. And that's where we are today with AI tech and photography. It's a huge shift and there will be some displacement. Right now, if you want a high-end corporate headshot, you're probably gonna hire a professional photographer. They may use an assistant and a makeup artist, so that's three people working on a job that are all getting paid. I would bet that in the not too distant future, everyone will be, will be able to scan their own face, maybe even just using your phone, and then have a professional looking headshot created in seconds. Or maybe you prefer to create a photo of yourself driving in a convertible through the Swiss Alps with the wind blowing through your hair. That's not a simple cut and paste job today, but with AI and a high res scan of your face, you can probably do it in seconds. Now, quantum computing is going to speed things up exponentially in a way that we've never seen. So all of this stuff will be instant and seamless. We'll eventually just take it for granted as a part of modern life like we currently do with cars. So I guess what I'm saying is that we all need to pay attention and adapt. If you're creating something that can easily be replicated, you need to start thinking ahead. Some work currently done by photographers will be created by machines in the future, but the digital revolution of the past 30 years has also created more millionaires and billionaires than ever before. There are new opportunities coming that we can't even imagine today. Now, I do have a lot of concerns about editorial photography. Anyone can already write anything they want, whether it's truth or not, but we used to believe that a photo couldn't lie. Now that anyone can create virtually any photograph, we can't trust anything we see anymore. AI-generated images can be used to sway public opinion or even overthrow governments. I am hoping we develop some guidelines so that we know if an image is real or not. But there are still some things machines may never be able to do. Connection is one of the things that makes us human. A good wedding photographer not only documents your day, but also works closely with you to assess your style and then reassure you throughout the process. 
Afterwards, they create an experience for their clients, maybe over some wine and a beautiful setting when you come in to view your photos. That experience is uniquely human and won't go away. Well, at least I hope not, but it is the wild, wild west right now. There are some big brains out there working on this stuff every day. I think some photography jobs will absolutely go away, but there will be a niche of working photographers who are hired for their unique style and for the human connection that they create. At the end of the day, I'm an optimist who thinks the pros of AI outweigh the cons. Lean in and use it to your advantage, but keep a watchful eye. I asked ChatGPT what it thought, and it said, Ultimately, the future of photography lies in striking a harmonious balance between AI's potential and human ingenuity. By embracing AI as a powerful tool and recognizing its limitations, photographers can harness its capabilities to augment their craft without compromising artistic integrity. I couldn't have said it better. Hey, thanks for sending in your photo questions. You can keep them coming by going to AskDavidBergman.com and filling out that form. If you're not already a subscriber to the Adorama YouTube channel, go ahead and click the subscribe button down below. Hit that little bell icon so you'll get notifications. Thanks so much for joining me, and I hope you'll come back next time when I'll have another question to answer right here on Ask David Bergman.